Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fly JV, and I am back with another video. Now, in today's video, I'm going to be explaining to you guys, okay, scientifically and step by step, how a jet engine is started. Airbus A320 style. Now, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Fly JV, and I am the coolest pilot on YouTube. If you haven't done so already, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss any of my videos. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. Now an airliner's jet engine can be started by three main sources. Let me start with the first one, the APU. The APU stands for Auxiliary Power Unit. It is a self-contained gas turbine which does not produce thrust and which produces electrical power and supplies bleed air to the air conditioning system of the aircraft or to start the engine of the aircraft, which is the subject of today's video. It is composed of a single shaft turbine, okay, which is connected to an accessory gearbox, which in turn is connected to the electrical generator of the APU and connected to the starter of the APU. The APU can be electrically started, okay, and the bleed air is provided through a load compressor of the APU and obviously the electrical power by the generator of the APU. The second air source is called an ASU. ASU stands for Air Starter Unit. It is a device that is located outside of the aircraft and is used by the ground workers. It will be connected to the engine that needs to be started and the bleed air will be provided through a hose and when that bleed air reaches the engine you will pro proceed to doing a normal engine start inside of the aircraft okay it is called an external pneumatic startup after that external pneumatic startup for one engine has been done most of the time you will proceed by doing a cross bleed start for the second engine which leads us to our third air source the other engine the other engine is a perfectly acceptable source of air as well now most of the time it will be used in flight but on the ground like i said before it can be used after an asu start for one engine as a cross bleed start for the engine that is still off okay you will open the cross bleed duct and through that duct you will send the engine bleed air from the engine that is already on to the engine that is off and that you want to be started now in flight you will use cross bleed start most of the time if you have lost an engine after an engine failure with no damage or an engine flame out. Before we get into the actual starting of the engine, it's important for you to understand how a jet engine actually works first. Now, let me talk to you about the Airbus A320's engines. The Airbus A320's engines is usually the CFM 565B engine. The CFM 565B engine is a gas turbine engine that is composed of two shafts, a low pressure shaft and a high pressure shaft. And the way it is set up is this way. Think of it like this. The low pressure shaft is the longer shaft and it is the innermost shaft. So basically the, the low pressure shaft will be like this with the high pressure shaft around the low pressure shaft. So that's how it's set up. Now it is divided into two parts, a compressor part and a turbine part. And it is divided with it in, in the middle, the combustion chamber. The combustion chamber is an annular assembly, which is composed of fuel nozzles and two igniters. Okay, now let's talk about the compressor side. The compressor side has, like I said before, a low pressure side and a high pressure side. The low pressure compressor is composed of one fan and four compressor stages. And the high pressure compressor is composed of nine compressor stages. Okay, let's move on to the turbine side. The turbine side, when you go to the low pressure turbine, it is composed of four turbine stages and the high pressure turbine is composed of one turbine stage. If you're an aviation enthusiast or if you have flown plane in the past then you've probably already heard about N1 and N2. N1 represents the fan speed or if you want the low pressure part of the engine. Okay, It is in percentage as a percentage of the maximum speed of the N1 or if you will the fan. N2 is attached to the high pressure rotor and is an indication of percentage of the speed of the high pressure rotor. It's as simple as that. Now, the CFM 565B engine is a high bypass engine. So there is a fan duct 
on the outside of the engine core through which air passes as well. And it is important to understand that 80% of the thrust of the engine is produced through that fan duct and not through the engine core. The engine core only produces 20% of the thrust and it is mainly there for the combustion, the, the, the chemical reaction that will produce the gas, which will drive the turbine and in turn drive the fan, which will produce 80% of that thrust in the first place. The high pressure shaft is connected to an accessory gearbox, which is used to drive engine hydraulic pumps, fuel pumps, and much, much more. Now that you understand how the engine works, let's talk about the start itself. Now bear with me, I will be separating this explanation in two parts or just two ways of viewing it if you want. I will talk about it in a scientific way and I will talk about it in a pilot's way. Let's start with a scientific way. To understand how a jet engine is started scientifically, it is important that you understand what a pneumatic starter is. A pneumatic starter is a case with a turbine inside and an air inlet obviously, which has a clutch which can connect and disconnect from the accessory gearbox. Now the air from whichever source you are using will get to the start valve. The start valve will open and let that air inside the pneumatic starter. Now when that air gets inside the pneumatic starter, with the turbine and the clutch, what does the pneumatic starter do? It converts the thermodynamic energy of that air into mechanical output energy from the spinning of the turbine. The clutch attaches to the accessory gearbox and that accessory gearbox which is attached to the HP shaft start spinning it okay the HP shaft spins and gets faster and faster and at, a, at some point the igniters go off flames are lit up a few seconds after that fuel is sent through the fuel nozzles and the combustion starts starting the chemical reactions and expelling the gas that is required to start turning the low pressure turbine when the low pressure turbine starts turning what happens is that in turn the low pressure compressor starts turning along with the fan. The two shafts are now spinning. They spin, spin, spin until they reach a point where the low pressure shaft can sustain itself. And the moment that happens, the pneumatic starter disconnects from the accessory gearbox and lets the N1 go up by itself to a point where it reaches idle state start valve closes and the engine has now been started with the low pressure compressor spinning fast enough to be able to sustain itself and keep the chemical reaction going. Let's move on to the pilot way of starting the engine or the pilot point of view if you will. It's important for you to know what the FADEC is before we can get into this. The FADEC stands for Full Authority Digital Engine Control and it is a device or a computer which has two channels one active channel and one standby channel for backup each engine has its own fadec the fadec monitors and controls the engine for startup and during its operation whether you're on the ground or in flight engine start is done usually during pushback you will have gotten the pushback and startup clearance from the atc and gotten the clearance to start the engines by the ground handler when you get that clearance to start the engine you will start with engine number two as per the sops and then proceed with engine number one you start with engine number two because on the airbus a320 engine number two is connected to the yellow hydraulic system and the yellow hydraulic system controls the parking brake the pilot flying will switch the engine mode selector to ignition and when every indication is normal and there are no amber crosses he will switch the engine master switch from off to on. The engine automatic start will start with the FADEC in the background, making sure that everything is going as per normal. The start valve opens. N2 starts rising. At 16% N2, ignition starts for that engine. At 22% of N2, fuel is then sprayed by the fuel nozzles and you will see fuel flow on the engine warning display. N1 rises, EGT rises, EGT stands for exhaust gas temperature, and your oil pressure rises as well. At 50% of N2, the start valve will close. 
and normal parameters should now be displayed. Now, a normal stable start will usually give you these following values. 20% N1, 400 degrees EGT, and 60% N2. The limitations say that EGT should never go beyond 725 degrees Celsius for a start. On the Airbus A320, it is not necessary to turn up the packs during a startup because the moment you switch the engine mode selector to ignition, the packs will automatically turn off by themselves to give you more available bleed air for that engine start. When the engine startup sequence is done, the pilot flying will then turn the engine mode selector to normal and switch off the APU bleed and then the APU. And the reason for that is now that you have both engines started, you do not need the APU for electrical supply or for bleed air supply because both of your engines can now do the job for you. In case of any problem during the automatic start sequence, the FADEC will automatically abort at the startup. For example, if you have a hot start, a hung start, a stall, or no light up during the startup. Now, it is important to know that on the Airbus A320, the limitations say that you can do up to four consecutive starts with two minutes for each start, 20 seconds between each start. And when all of these four consecutive starts have been used up, you should allow for a 15 minute cooling period before you attempt another four consecutive starts. You now know how an Airbus A320 engine start works, and I'm pretty sure you would be able to do it by yourself with all of these instructions. Now, thank you for watching my video. I hope this makes sense to you. If you have any more questions about the topic or any other questions that you want to ask me, leave your comments down below. Now, make sure that you follow me on Instagram, and if you haven't done so already, make sure that you join the Discord server. In the Discord server, you will see other members of the FlyJV crew. You'll be able to talk to them. You'll be able to talk to them about Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 if you want. You'll be able to ask people questions, share knowledge about flight schools, flight jobs, talk about aircrafts, everything. I will be in there from time to time to talk to you, and we will be there chilling 24 7. It's your boy FlyJV. It's another video in the books, and I'm out, bro. FlyJV forever. No sé lo que estoy buscando Pero guapa eres lo que yo necesito Cuando vi tu cuerpo, baby, cambiado La noche está empezando Baby, no te quiero mentir Solo te quiero sentir Vamos a compartir Uno al lado del otro Con el mismo futuro Cuando te mira a los ojos Te quería en mi cama Mi cama sin demora